that's a very, very tough question. No one knows the answer of that. But if you'd ask me this question, let's say two months ago, I would have said no. Uh, tech posts are not going anywhere because the, the kind of movement at least I was seeing uh, or the kind of push I was seeing the government was making on the other aspects of uh, GST. I think increasingly over the last couple of weeks, I started to feel a lot more confident that, uh, that uh, they might uh, take some strong measures uh, in taking the tech post out. The tech post uh, uh, serve two purposes, right? One is uh, the commercial sales tax uh, you know, objective. The other is also uh, the tech post, also, the integrated tech post also have uh, transport uh, of his RTUs, as you call it, right? Who check the check whether the vehicles are in the dimension, the Motor Vehicle Act, the, the norms and regulations of the Motor Vehicle Act are followed or not. Now, it is a prerogative of the state to whether they take off the check post, the check post in full or not. So, Orissa last two weeks ago has actually taken off the check post and have built a green channel. Andhra, and Tel Andhra has done that. Telangana is very close to and told doing that. Uh, so we deal with a whole lot of, we deal with all the states and I personally would have met all the principal settings uh, of transport. So there is no clarity yet and it is, uh, it depends on the prerogative of the state. My own sense is central government will push the law. So wherever uh, there is probably the alignment in the governance, they want to push it uh, through. Wherever there is not, they, it might take some more time. Uh, my confidence on whether they will go down over the next one year is very high as opposed to going, you know, check post going down immediately in the next three to six months. As, uh, you know, today's discussion, working capital was a key point and the family time was also a key point. So, like typically, and the, the roadway is improving, right? So, definitely, uh, as Nikos was mentioning that in terms of the total waiting period or the queuing time from a border A to border B, right, state to state B, is very minimal. 69 is the median, that is the number that they collect. Uh, but you know, the general conception uh, or the, uh, the perception of the people is basically that normally 30 to 40 percent of the total time is in, in the queuing time. So there is a big potential of primary logistics savings which the companies are looking forward to us. Which Deepak put in your presentation, you have clarified, right? You know, 69 minutes is hardly, you know, one hour or maximum two hours is the time. The, uh, the, but the question which is coming to the mind is that when you have not all transporters have the same model that you are operating where in, you know, transit time from a weighted average five days has been crashed to two days, two and a half to the ABO. Normally the transit time is five to seven days whatever network you are having. But GST definitely people are trying to look into how it can be crashed by at least 40%, 30% and how that is going to translate into the working capital reduction as well. And finally, the bottom line is going to the primary trade reduction. So that is the expectation from all these people as well. And my own sense is, as I mentioned, the transit time reduction will not come from the check post. Check post will reduce a reduce some expenses, will reduce, uh, I think, nuisance for some of the fleet operators, but it will not lead to a material impact on the transit line. The material impact on transit line will come from this whole road construction program. I've been driving the entire country, visited all the all our food shops. In every state, the base of road construction on the ground is to be seen. I think, I think that is going to bring down the, the transit line significantly. Of course, we'll do our bit to whatever extent we can to relay, but that will only, as you said, to be addressed only one or two percent of the market. But a large transit line will actually come to the uh, quality of the road and also quality of the trucks uh, if and when they start coming with PS4 and PS6 and so on. Uh, we're starting to see that happen in some places. Uh, 
but uh, I think uh, most of the states are not going to give up their nice energy. Uh, but, but, you know, the, uh, on the flip side, you know, this eBay bill, you know, this is going to be a huge cost. Because what that essentially the platform suggests is that your entire group, you will be stopped only once. Right, for tax. So, so that, I think, is, uh, is going to be a big step forward. And while the median uh, uh, may be 69 minutes, uh, the variance, as you probably know, is pretty high. Right? So, so there are uh, enough and more uh, occasions when it runs into several hours of trivial days at times. But that, again, uh, is uh, also a consequence of uh, deficiency in paperwork or something and, and what the whole digitization of uh, the ecosystem is going to ensure is if you really into this, so really it's about incentivizing the ecosystem. If you if you really into this, you get on the event of the program, yeah, I get that system. Hello, everyone. My name is Devesh. I'm from Whitebank Systems. Uh, so we are into a technology. And uh, we need to be able to see commerce products and digital supply chain solutions. So my question uh, is to Mr. Sunil. Uh, that uh, uh, so I have two questions. First question is, uh, what happens to uh, uh, CAP agents when after GST? Like uh, right now, for saving tax, we have those people. But what happens after GST to them? Uh, they are gone from this chain, or they become stockist or distributor themselves. What happens to them? They have to give, uh, so that's one question. The second question is uh, to anyone uh, that uh, how do you see uh, technology B2B commerce uh, in this chain where you can, uh, we are talking about consolidating, consolidating warehouses, so you can opt for B2B commerce similar to B2C commerce companies are doing, like taking an order uh, online from distributors and then fulfilling it from the nearest warehouse using IT enabled e-commerce systems. So what, how do you see all of B2B e-commerce in this uh, supply chain system? So these are the two questions. Thank you. Okay, the first question is about uh, the CNFA current, what happens to them? Uh, see, uh, it's a chain management. So GST is also a kind of a chain management wherein definitely we have to partner with HR colleagues as well, HR business partner as well, that how the transition should happen. So definitely when you move from 33 to 20, 15, whatsoever, there will be a kind of a churn happening. Uh, but it's not only with GST, because this project, whatever we are trying to embark on as a company, we are not doing it today. So in terms of our strategy for the company where I belong is one region, one partner. In that way, we have embarked upon this journey for the last five, six years as well, right? So there is a, there is a way of compliant way of doing, having the right change management. And definitely, there are models where the current people who are very experienced, there are people are also getting to the roles of the trivial so on and so forth, depending on the trivial where you are going to interact with. So there's a, there's a total change management and very well defined path of managing the entire show. It's not like that, you know, we, as a, you know, the current existing CNFA can become a distributor, and those things depend on company to company's policy, right? So does that answer the first query? So how Mondelez is this planning it, like, uh, how you will be working with your CFS? So every company is having their own policies. So one of the key core structure is the chain management again I talk to. And sometimes the good people into the CNFAs are getting, you know, uh, involved with the new tribute which comes, right? For us, it's an ongoing, ongoing journey for the last five years, so it's nothing new for us. So answer is like, it's, it depends on the company. Okay. Yeah, but it should be handled in a very uh, structured in a methodical manner with the right HR business partner involved into this of you know, managing the show so that the business does not get disrupted. Second question, can you Second say? question was about uh, the role of technology in case of B2B commerce, like uh, B2C retailers are doing taking orders online and uh, by using smart algorithms they are choosing the nearest warehouse to fulfill their orders. How do you see all of B2B e-commerce? Uh, this, this has not much to do with GST, but yeah. How do you see all of uh, B2B e-commerce where you can take orders online from distributors, uh, after consolidating warehouse, you can complete from the nearest warehouse, and making those kind of decisions, and integrating it with
with your SAP and other ERP systems? So typically, uh, this is a customer service department's job actually. So under planning and logistics, we have a customer service department which is outsourced, right? So you have all the distributors who are intertwined and interlinked with the system. And they have their own system which is company system and for which they are placing the orders. Orders are typically, as I mentioned in my presentation, was VMI, which is a random managed inventory. You have the, you have the safety stocks level and you have defined the norms. Base is the difference. Basically, the secondary sales, the norms, the sales, the order gets generated. That comes automatically to the system, switched on to the system, and gets into our, to the interface with SAP. And finally, the customer service team processes the order, and final delivery happens to the CRM points to them. So those remain the same. It doesn't have to be anything in the GST. The only thing is that the alignment of the distributor. Suppose that distributor was being catered pre-GST to a CNFAX, now they might be catered to CNFAY. That will be the only change that is going to happen. The system remains the same. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Like, mo most of the companies in the US are like adopting B2B technologies, uh, B2B e-commerce basically. Like EDI uh, and all you're talking about, right? EDI is old, I mean, pretty, pretty old, uh, not old, but yeah, people are using it for many days. I'm, I'm saying like, distributor going to your website, for example, <laughs> They have their own login for and they have this model online. So that takes out the EDI part and so you are talking about an extension of vendor managed inventory. So vendor moves to that. So to that level we have not bought in to be very honest with you. Right now what we have is that we can see the vendor's inventory. Sorry, customer's inventory, right? And through customer's inventory and predefined norms, the order gets generated. In terms of the supplier part, what you're talking about? Supplier looking into our inventory, raw material inventory, and basis that the order is placed. Those things are happening, but not for all, a few selected suppliers. But that is one thing which is definitely going to impact the inventory in hand and reduce the working capital. The upstream part that we are into the process. Uh, for your information, there is a session in the afternoon where there is multi-channel customer experience being discussed. So maybe you can reserve some of the questions for that panel. निकला है ना 
हर हर इवेंट में जगह जगह में लगाते हैं लोग काउंटर ये सब कुछ भी नहीं है चिंदी चोर है ऐसे तो उधर बचाने के चक्कर में